Amen to God. If you have your Bibles this morning, we're going to go to Ephesians 1, the first chapter of the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to use for our thought this morning the mystery of His will. His will. Now I want to say right offhand that I don't think it's so much the mystery of His will as far as what His will actually is, I think we can read the Word of God and know that. Amen. Amen. For instance, it's foolish for anybody to pray, Lord, heal them if it be Thy will. That's unbelief. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish, or I will it, above all things, that Thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosper. So we have no business praying, Lord, anoint me if it be thy will. Lord, bless me if it be thy will. Those are all statements that say you don't believe that God wants to bless you. And that you don't believe God wants to heal you. How many know there are denominations in this day when they offer prayer for the sick? This is the way they pray. Now, Lord, heal our sister if it be thy will. And if not, take her home without suffering. Well, I want you to know something. Don't never pray that prayer over me. I don't care how spiritual you may think you are, and I don't care how religious you are, don't ever come pray for me if, I, if that's the way you pray. Save your prayer for somebody else. Don't waste it on me. Hallelujah. Because I know what the will of God is. I know it's the will of God that all men be saved. That's what First Timothy chapter 2 says, who will, he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I know and you know what the will of God is to a degree and extent in reading the scriptures. But I don't believe we fully understand the nature of his will or the power that is behind or in back of that will. Just how powerful is this will of God? We are swamped with terminology such as words that really these lines are not in the Scripture. They're just adapted and adopted in messages. But the line free moral agent, how many has ever heard that described about man, that man's a free moral agent? Well, I want you to search your Bibles and see if there's any verse in that Bible that says, man, my free moral agent. It doesn't say anything. God would no longer turn man loose to be his own agent. How do you know that? Because I know the word in Jeremiah 10 says it's not in the ways of man to direct his own steps. He don't know how to be his own agent. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thou heart's desperately wicked above all things and who can know it? No man but God can know it. So we hear this teaching about free moral agent. And then we hear People say all the time, well, God can't uh, uh, or God won't uh, override another man's will. Well, folks, that's just not true. Get quiet in this here church this morning. Don't be a dummy, man. God's bigger than your will. And I'm going to preach to you this morning about why that will is a mystery. It ain't that the actual uh, what of that will is a mystery. We can read it in the Bible. It's His will that He love us. It's His will that He save us. It's His will that He heal us. It's His will that He, you know, that He, he uh, shape us and form us. We know that. But it's the mystery of His will we're dealing with. So it's part of that will we have not yet to discern. And the part we've not yet discerned is how does that will work in my life? Is it powerful enough to overcome anything I'll pass through? Is it so big that I can go all the way to the bottom and hit it twice and still come out of that thing on top. Glory be to God. Is it big enough that I can pass through the valley of the shadow of death fearing no evil because I know that His will is bigger than my will and that He has hemmed me up in Himself so that even though I hunt for a way out, I can't find the way out because my life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. God doesn't just save us from our enemy. He saves us from ourselves. When we would quit, when we would give up, when we would fall, when we would turn around, we can't find nowhere to do it because we hear the voice of the Lord saying, this is my way or this is my will. Walk ye there in it. Amen. 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 And that part I think is the 
mystery God's trying to get across to us. We don't know the strength of His will. First of all, I want to tell you before I read our scriptures that it is a lie that God created man a free moral agent. God did no such a thing. God created man in His own image and His own likeness. Man had no will of his own. So that destroys the least theory that Adam sold the earth to the devil because it had, because he willed to do so and that we're waiting on the least to run up so we can have our authority. Well, I'm telling you, you're a day late and a dollar short. He gave out authority 2,000 years ago. So let's look at this briefly here, this scripture in Ephesians 1 and verse, let's see where I want to start. I wrote down some of that I'll just quote to you, but I want to read uh, 3 through 14. Verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath, past tense, already blessed us with how many? All. All what kind of blessings? Spiritual. Spiritual blessings. Where are they? In heavenly places. Where are you? In heavenly places. Are you not? In Christ Jesus. Glory to God. According as He hath chosen us in Him. Now, right away we've got to straighten out translation there because that phrase in Him is supposed to be translated He chose us out of Him. I was in Him, and He chose me out of Him. Right. The word in the Greek is ek, E-K, two little letter word, and it means that I was in the center of Him. I was right dead in the middle of Him. I, I was right there in Him, and He called me by name, for the word chosen there means to call one by name. Hallelujah. And Brother G.C. McCurry said that Genesis 1 should read, in the beginning God created the heaven, then He called my name, then He created the earth. Somebody right. say Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't call me by the name my mother and father gave me. He called me by his family name. Amen. He's going to give me a stone as an overcomer with a new name written on it that no man's going to know except he that receiveth it. Somebody say praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. He chose me. He called me by name. He called me. He's called me from himself. If I had you, I remember one time right after we was married maybe two years or so and I took my wife over to that big castle, you know, to eat and I had her on the anniversary. We was all down there in the same room and it was full of people and one by one they'd come down there and summon you by name. And when you got some in my name, you got up and left the crowd and went to another room. Well, I want you to know, hallelujah, that you were so you were gathered all as one in Him. And He came in and summoned you. And then you had to get up and come forth and move to the next room called the earth. Amen. Why? Because God is filling this earth with an establishment of His kingdom and His glory. And He's planting His own seed here to grow a garden. So I was chosen in Him. When was I chosen in Him? When He died at Calvary? No. When He was buried in the tomb? No. When He rose again from the dead? No. Before there was ever a foundation. Before there was ever an earth. Before there was ever a heaven. Before there was ever a place for God to hang His hat. I hung in Him before the stars hung in the sky. I hung in Him before the moon hung in the earth. I hung in Him before the sun was set in action. I hung in Him. I heard Him. I spoke with Him. I talked with Him. The only thing was I didn't have none of this to hold me back. I was free. I had a spirit. I was part of it. I got the holler in spirit this morning. I was a part of Him. H-I-M. Him. The Word. Not words. But the W-R-D word, the word, was made flesh. Yeah. But before it was made flesh, it was the eternal word, seed of God. Right. You and I are of the original family. 
adjourned the auction uh, and got up and folded up his stuff and started to leave and the people became irate. All of them said, what's going on here? We've drove thousands of miles to get our hands on this stuff. We've been reading what's available. We want this stuff. And the man auctioneer said, I don't care folks, there's a big thing on the back of this portrait of this son that reads clear. He who gets a son gets it all. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you this morning, you don't have to chase down some little part of God's will to make your ministry work. If you get hooked up with God's big idea, it'll all flow together. What's the will of 
God for me to do? What's the will of God for me to do? The first will of God, the first thing to know the mystery of the will of God is you come out of Him and you going back into Him. So you might as well get busy serving Him. Listening to what He's got to say. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said, let every man be slow to speak. Yes. But quick to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let's read on a little further. We're so that, but I want you to see that that adoption means we're being placed. Uh, we're placed back into sonship. The uh, Amplified, I believe it is, says it's the spirit in you that produces sonship. When it says God has sent forth the spirit of His Son right. in Galatians into our heart, crying what? Abba Father, or my Father. <laughs> Oh, nobody could have got get that. And Jesus was in the earth and He's only, only, only everything. Only. But then when He raises again, He turns around and tells Mary, don't you hold me here. Right. Don't you fall in love with this. I know this is a new form to you, but I'm fixing to take on the ultimate form. Glory to God. He many is going to take on that corporate man, that body of Christ. Amen. And He said, don't hold me here. Don't detain me is what He said. Don't detain me. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to ascend. But he didn't just say to my father. He, glory to God, that time he said, I'm going to ascend to my father and to your father. Hallelujah. And to your father. Hebrews said, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Now we read that word suffered and we think about the things we've had to suffer and we think about something just sneaking up on you don't we? Taking hold of you and you have no power of it. But that word suffering in the Greek and Hebrews means that they're the things which he allowed. He, glory to God. He allowed it. He even had power over his own suffering. But to hear people tell it today, we have no power. We're just lost in a wind somewhere, floating around hoping we make it. Folks, that's because we've not yet seen the mystery of His will. Yeah. Yeah. The mystery of His will. How many believe this this morning? Right. You see, then verse 6 says, we're for the praise of His glory and, 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 and we're the praise of His grace. <coughs> Wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Well, glory to God. In whom we have redemption from sins through His blood forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace wherein He hath bounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made, this is our verse now, having made known unto us the mystery of His will. Yes, right. Now I want you to think about what the next line says. After it says the mystery of His will it says according to His good pleasure. Yes. There isn't hardly any church person on this earth that relates the will of God to good pleasures. That's one reason we've never pursued to know it. We're afraid of it. Now, I'll preach that to you in just a minute. Amen. Then he talks about in the dispensation of the fullness of times he'll gather together both in one all things which are in heaven and in earth. It says that, that, and this is how the mind of God, this is how the, mind, the will of God is deposited forth in us. It is in, through, and by, and inheritance. Hallelujah. Jesus had a last what? Will and testament. He willed us something. Right. He left us an inheritance. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll not leave you as orphans. But he said, I will come again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will come again. And he has come now to pay full payment, full restitution Amen. on that inheritance within you. You and I have only know we read a little further down. What do we find out about this inheritance? We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And that baptism of the Holy Ghost is the what? Earnest. Yes. Earnest of our inheritance. The Amplified Bible said it's a down payment. Yes. It's just the first fruits. Yeah. It's just the good faith money yes. of what we shall have oh, until the redemption, glory to God, of His purchased possession. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord have mercy. Hallelujah to God. The redemption of his purchased possession. Amen. And then he says, after I heard of your faith in verse 15 of the Lord Jesus and love to the saints, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers always that the God of, the fa of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and that you may know the full glory of this riches of inheritance uh, that He's put within the saints uh, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power unto usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and mights dominions names that are named in this world of that which is to come and given him to be the head over all things in the church which is the the fullness of his body, that which fills all in all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The will of God released to us. Not for us to fear it or be afraid of it. Oh, hallelujah. First thing, you know, that I think should be said when it comes to our relation to the will of God is that that will is solely put towards us, his creation. That will ain't for nothing else. It's for us. <coughs> Hallelujah. I just believe whatever God wants, He's going to get it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Some of these people believe you can stop God from getting what He wants. Isaiah 55 says that the, there's a rains and the snow coming down from the heavens and returning not thither. But go forth and water the earth, cause it to bring forth and, and, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He said, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. They shall not return unto me, boy. Yes. They shall accomplish the thing which I please, and they'll prosper. Glory to God wherever I send it. Hallelujah. And I want you to know this morning that the will of God's the most sure boat you'll ever sail on. And the problem with the will of God is you're used to prophets thundering out doom to you if you don't <coughs> obey the will of God and they give you the wrong concept of what the will of God is. The will of God is your protection. The will of God is your ship of safety. The will of God is your zone to home. Somebody say praise the Lord. The will of God is the path for your feet. The will of God cannot fall. It prospers. It takes you over. Amen. It houses you. It protects you. It hems you in. It hedges you in. It shelters you from the storm. Glory to God. The will of God is peace. The will of God is joy. The will of God is pure. The will of God is sweet. It's lovely. It's beautiful thing. It's not something to be afraid of. Amen. Amen. But you see, the will of God is only, and I want you to hear this. If you don't hear nothing else to say, I say this morning, the will of God is only, only, it can only ever be good. Uh, it can only do you good. It can't do you harm. And here's where our fear has been bred into our thinking because we've been told by preachers that that same God who loves us wills to do us harm if we don't do just right in His sight. And the truth is, they ain't nobody ever done just right in His sight because the will of man is not big enough to carry Him anywhere. The will of man will go to the altar and say, oh, I'm going to serve Him this week only to wake up tomorrow and fail him one more time. Right. If you put your trust in the will of man, yeah, and you got people running around all the time saying, God didn't make man like a robot. He wanted to make man to make his own decision. That's a bunch of bunk. He didn't want man to make his own decision. It ain't in man to make his own decision. Every time man makes his own decision, it's selfish. It's against somebody. It tries to get him higher up while knocking somebody else down. But the will of God will take you up and the one beside you right on with you. Praise the Lord. It is a stairway into the paths of righteousness that will raise us up and cause us to see above everything that has kept us down. The will of God is a covering. It's a hedge. It hovers over us, overseeing the plans and purposes and the pursuits of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The will of God. The mystery of His will. The mystery of His will. And I want you to think with me for a moment in your minds. 
If we were to go to the book of Genesis and, and, and I, in this Bible this morning, not this one, but this one, you know what I mean, just in your spirit. If you could travel me to the first chapter of the book of Genesis, I know we've been there quite often lately, but to hear those words spoken out in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was, or they should be, became without form. And it was void, and it was darkness fell upon the face of the deep. God never makes anything void. God never makes anything without a form. Hallelujah. In fact, God will give it a form before He breathes into it the breath of life because He is wanting to give substance to something. Hallelujah. There's a way for God to be personified in all of His glory and that is in His creation. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that the Lord of the earth was or became without form and it was void. Darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of the Lord started to hover over the face of the waters. Hallelujah. And God's voice began to come forth and he said light be and light was oh hallelujah to Jesus name he spoke it out of his mouth and creation responded to that sound of his voice what was the sound of it it was a sound of a will that had power to make everything come forth as he designed it as he desired it as he willed it to be he willed his creation. He willed this earth. He willed its taking on of a form that was renewed, renovated by the words of God himself. The Bible says that that first man, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. That our there is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That hour there is God speaking to all of His creation. If you look up that word there, when God said it's God Elohim, do you know Elohim is God in the plural? And it means God in His many-membered many creation. We were with Him without a doubt, folks. And that's what you need to know. See, we've been robbed all these years to think that God was just trying out samples till He found one that worked. I want you to know, hallelujah, the will, the mystery of His will is He ain't never lost count. He ain't never quit numbering. He ain't never quit watching. He ain't never quit multiplying. If God was done, He would wouldn't let nobody have babies no more. My God, He keeps the life flow going because He knows that His will is going to produce what He wants in this earth. Right. All right, man. He wouldn't allow for creation or procreation to go on in this earth if He intended to bring things to a halt. The very fact that you see babies and children running around in this church today is the very fact that God still has plans for this Amen. earth. He's not done. Amen. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. His will, you see, the mystery of His will. He creates that He may establish. He brings forth that He may set them up. He, oh, hallelujah. He speaks that He may create. And He creates that He may establish that which He created. Glory to God. And He establishes it because He wills it to be. He wills it to be. The will of God will cause you to outlive every doctor's report that's ever been given you. Hallelujah. The will of God will cause you to override uh, troublesome times that have taken some down. You say, why did it take them down? They didn't understand that there was something in them big enough not to go under. They didn't die. They didn't go under. They didn't lose it all because they wanted to. They lost it all because they were tormented by fear of what they didn't know. What they didn't know was God wouldn't have hurt them. God wouldn't have took it away from them. God wouldn't have stopped it. God would have came in, overwhelmed them with who He was. He would have been steady. He would have been sure. How many believe what I'm saying to you this morning? You and I I have got to overcome our fear of totally abandoning ourselves for two and for the will of God. I'm telling you, I used to pray, but I prayed with reservations. I was afraid God would send me somewhere I didn't want to go. And so I never would just loose myself to whatever the Lord did. <laughs> How many knows that I'm not riding that car by myself this morning? Amen. So, hallelujah. There are places we get deeper in prayer. The deeper in prayer you get, the more you realize just how puny you are. Amen. You get so deep you hit the point and then suddenly you just think you broke through to God and then you hit a hard spot. You hit a hard knock. Fear will hit you and say, well now what if the Lord 
wanted you to do this. Or what. If God wanted you to do that, He'd give you grace to do it. He won't take you nowhere that His grace right, right. can't provide the means for you to do it. If God sends you to China, He'll make you want to be a Chinese. If God sends you to Africa, He'll make you want to be an African. If God sends you, praise God, to the Northland somewhere, He'll make you love snow, want to roll in it. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. This is the mystery of His will. His will is equal by ever. Hallelujah. Loving, not ending grace that will empower you to be exactly what He ordains you to become. You don't have to fear the task at hand. Hallelujah. He will not reveal His will to you without He first imparts the grace to you to handle what His will is revealed to you. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He won't uproot you until He's first packed in, dug out, and protected every little strand so that you won't feel the pain. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thought? The mystery of His will. Amen. Our image, our likeness. After God gave form to it, let me tell you something. I'll tell you who that man was. He was God. We, we can't relate to that too good uh, if we stay in the wrong mindset because people don't teach that. He was God. He looked like God. He sounded like God. He had the same power as God. Right. <laughs> Had the same ability as God. Named every one of them animals. Called them by name. God says to God. <laughs> Multiply. Replenish. I give you all dominion. I give you all. Let me tell you something. When it comes to this mystery, it's mysterious to us how God can never see a fault. Never. They'll happen and He won't acknowledge them. You want to ask God sometimes when you're reading the earlier parts of the, of the Old Testament, God, did you know Adam fell? Right. You want to stop and ask Him sometimes. You get over there to Psalms 8. I mean man's in another mess as far as the natural eyes concerned. And He starts saying, what is this wonderful man I've created? I'm so yeah. mindful of Him. I've visited Him. Yeah. I've given Him dominion yeah. over all the works in my head. I've crowned Him with glory and honor. And you want to pull on the Lord's sleeve and say, hey, did you know your boy messed up back yonder? Right. Did you know all oh, Israel the beast they about every God did they pass by? Don't you feel bad at Israel? You do too. You just ain't made out of stone no more. Right. Whatever you devote the most of your time and attention to is your God. Well, right. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. If you give something else more time than you do the Lord, then you got something ahead of him. You're an idol worshiper. Amen, church. And then we want and, 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 and then God will say about Israel, she's apple of my eye. I love her so. I won't let any other nation touch her. Isn't that wonderful? And you want to tell the Lord, hey. Did you know Israel was over yonder? I mean, one time he took Ezekiel in the cracks of the wall. And Ezekiel looked and even the priest was bowing down the graven images. And then God would turn right around and tell Ezekiel, you get out of here and prophesy I've loved her like a wife. And I won't let no other man have her. <coughs> Don't you let Ezekiel ever want to turn around there and tell God, go tell him yourself. I'm tired of dealing with them. And then you say, what makes something like that happen? The will of God. Hallelujah. It's too powerful to break. God promises God. God swears unto God. Because He can swear by no greater. He swore by Himself. Saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee. Multiplying it. Nothing bigger than the will of God. Folks, if God declared something's going to be, if He told you that boy of yours was going to prophesy, if you had to drag him out of the gutter drunk and throw him in the bed before you come to church this morning. God, hallelujah, ain't smelled no liquor yet. All he Amen. sees is, I will that boy to prophesy and he's going to prophesy if I have to stand him up in a broken stupor and make the word go like fire out of his mouth. I'll do it. Right. I won't tell you, I've had experience with the will of God that it baffled me, but they let me know God's bigger than what we think ought to go on. 
I've seen heathens, I mean heathen people that was willfully doing things that was against the Word of God. I've seen them come in church just because they was coming to get their conscience eased a little bit. And I've seen those people without praying a prayer, without doing what you would call repenting. All people's repentance is if you want to see somebody get humble enough to satisfy your ego. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, no, that's preaching. Yeah. Praise God. I've seen them people that nobody had prayed for, led them to the Lord, told them they was backslid, or how to talk with them about how to live right. I've seen the power of God hit them right there in their seat. Oh, glory to God. Both hands go up there and they start speaking in other tongues. You say, well, what do you do about that? You shut up. That's what you do. You speak in tongues with them. Go over there and shout with them. Why? Because it's the will of God being worked out. Brother, the will of God's big. It's powerful. See, the mystery of His will is he, it's working to do you good. It's working to bring about His good, get this now, His good pleasure. Yes. Isn't that what the Word says? Yes. We don't think about the will of God being for good pleasure. We think about the will of God being if you just step out of it, you're you're going to bust hell out of it. But how many know the will of God is working to send people to hell? Right. Amen. I'm just telling you what the Word says. You got any arguments, you have to go answer the Word box this morning because that's where I'm getting all my, my, my papers out of the Word box. The Word box that I read says that it's not the will of God that any man should perish. Oh, and I'm God. But that how many? All. all should do what? Come to repentance. Yeah. I'm just telling you what God wills. Now let's talk about Adam a little bit more. After all of that has come about, after God has put his man forth, he, that, is that not the will of God, that garden? Is that not the Eden, God's delight? The Bible says that after he created this man, he then planted a garden eastward. And he placed the man he made in that garden, and, and what did he tell him to do? Dress it and keep it. You know what he told him? Maintain this status. Yeah. Glory to God. Maintain this status. You don't have to lose it. This is yours. I set you in it. You're hallelujah that she said you're in charge. Now let me tell you something. Who did God put when he made that man? God had no mirror. The only mirror he had was himself. Well, I submit to you this morning, whether you can handle it or not, I don't believe God created man with a will. I believe He created man with His own mind right. and His own likeness and His own nature. Don't you believe that this morning? I don't believe man had a conscience. All he had was God. If he had any, it had to be a God conscience, which is all God. Amen. But yet we've been told over and over again that we need to keep a sin consciousness. Because if we don't, we'll go out and sin. Right. So you live most of your Pentecostal life listening to sermon after sermon on sin. Yeah. Fifty people in the crowd, all born again, spirit-filled, and they're preaching on sin. Because yeah. yeah. they say you got to keep people sin conscious. I've heard some of the most what we thought were powerful evangelists of the day literally say that we must stay sin, sin conscious. Therefore, every time you go to church, the will of God to them was, you better go repent, get saved again. Get, <clears throat> you know, you can't be reborn again. Once you're born again, you're born again. You won't ever lose that. You say, you sound like the bad guy. I know it, but I can't help it. It's the truth. You're not going to lose your new birth. Nope. You may leave it. You may go out there and do a lot of stupid stuff. But I can tell you now, if you'll touch this right here, you'll find God somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. You won't never outrun the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You'll never outrun. He'll show up in that bare joint and slap you on the shoulder and you'll think it's one of your drinking buddies and turn around and see an angel. God's big enough, folks. I mean, His will. His will. How can Paul, Paul die, supposed to die so many times and don't die? How can he go through the serpent's venom? How can he go through the poison of the 
mushrooms in the soup? How can he go through the shipwreck? How can he go through the three beatings of 39 stripes? How can he actually die from the stones that busted his skull when they stoned him and left him for dead and then beat him back in the city and preach that through much tribulation uh, men shall enter the kingdom of God? I'll tell you how he knew the mystery of his will. Hallelujah. He knew if God purposed it, it had to be. He knew God said, you're going to Rome and you're going to stand before Caesar. You ain't going to die. I've got something for you to do. If you can't get healed just because you know it's God's will, get healed because you know he ain't through with you yet. He's got something for you to do. Praise God, folks. The mystery of his will. How can you lose your home? God's got a work for you to do. How can you lose uh, what you know to be true? I don't care if 10,000 uh, uh, people standing on your yard in the morning telling you you can't make it. Uh, you're going to fail. You're gonna, you don't even have to listen. Hear them say anything. Just walk through them and part the sea. Wave your hand uh, and shout uh, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Tell everybody, take your best shot. When you're through, just move out of my way so I can walk through. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie with the man in the iron mask? And at the end of it, the three musketeers, it's over all of them running up, and they all fire, all the other musketeers fire at these three. And when all the smoke clears out of the hall and all the sparks have settled down, they come in three. They may be limping a little bit, but they're still marching on. You know what them other boys did that shot at them? They all put their guns down and got on their knee and began to salute them because they had power. Hallelujah. To stand through the bullets and still be walking when they was over with. That's called the will of God. Hallelujah. When everything hits you that can hit you. Glory to God. I mean, when the rent comes due and the belly aches uh, and even the old dog's crying about it. Uh, glory to God. Uh, and instead of you whining uh, and having a fit uh, and patting yourself on the back uh, and sitting over there saying, nobody don't love me. Uh, I look at the mess I'm in. Uh, you get up anyhow and say, I've got something tougher than that in me. I'm ordained to make it uh, and I'm going to make it. Uh, then that is the understanding of the mystery of His will. It can't stop you. It's not big enough. Greater if God be for you. Who can be against you? How do you think we make it through all we make it through? Surely you don't think I said that somebody would feel sorry for me. My God. I can't expect nobody to feel sorry for me. I haven't rendered such kindness. You can only get what you meted out, and I haven't meted out no feeling sorry for nobody. So I can't expect to receive what I didn't sow. So I say, well, bless God, I get up, uh, hallelujah, get my own collar, pull myself up. Hallelujah. I guarantee you if I go through anything like that, you'd never know it. And that's what's wrong with some of you. You want everybody to know it. You want everybody to see how bad it is. Well, let me tell you something. There's people in this church having bad issues right now. They're walking by faith and not by sight. And you know what they're doing? They're discerning the mystery of God's will. That God ain't brought them this far. Hallelujah. But stop in the middle of the thing and turn His back on them. You tell me something when you go to church and life's in a mess, what do you do? Do you sit there and blow up and huff up and want everybody to feel sorry and notice that you ain't praising the Lord? Or do you come in there with an amen in your mouth anyhow? Do you raise your hands anyhow? Do you shout anyhow? Do you don't tell me you got power if you can't shout in the middle of your storm like you can when it's all right? Honey, Jesus walks in the midst of a storm. Get on out there. Trust him a little bit. The will of God, it'll keep you, it'll make you, it'll glory, it. it'll cause you to triumph over all of your storm. That's how 
you discern the mystery of your wish, say, wait a minute, God willed something better than this for me, bless God. Amen? Hallelujah! And yet, you know, you don't have to fear. David said, I'll not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade. And upon his right hand I will not be moved. That's what, wow, because you know the mystery of his will. All right. I am in submitting to you that Adam didn't have such things in the original uh, intentions of God, that he was totally controlled by the spirit life, and that his mind could only think as God's mind. Then we must conclude that he inherited his own intentional will from the same place he inherited everything else. And that was from the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil. Can't we arrive at that safely? That man's free will came in when he ate of the wrong tree. Hallelujah. Because that was the tree of death. And to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Adam never ate of the tree of life. If he'd eat of the tree of life, he'd have been eternal. He'd have never died. Somebody say praise the Lord. But you see, his, his bride was his soul. And his soul became separated from him. She was took out of him. Isn't that right? So now he looks at her and says, Woman, or literally, womb of man. In the Greek, uh, Hebrew, rather, the word is Isha, because she issued from my side. She issued from me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he said, This is now, everybody say now, now. bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. He had never known that flesh part. He had never known that natural part. But now he's talking about bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Oh, hallelujah, which was a prophecy of our coming back into it. But I won't get into that at the moment. And then he said, Then shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. He was fixing to leave that spiritual state yes. of existence to go by faith and prophecy into a realm of death and condemnation that was spurred by carnal thinking which came about by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that produced the spirit of death. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, did Eve eat of the fruit? Yes, she did. Did she communicate with the serpent? Yes, because she, the soul is the seed of all expression. But the soul had to express what the spirit was speaking to her because the man is the head of the woman. Right. Hallelujah. She couldn't just say what she wanted to. Something had to inspire her or give her what she said. So that serpent was closer than we think it was. It was wrapped in a tree all right. It was wrapped in Adam's tree, his thinking tree. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus' name. That wasn't some old green snake, king, king snake or something wrapped up in a, on a tree limb. You better get more spiritual than that if you're going to walk in this revelation. No, sir. And the fruit she ate, eating on wasn't out of no fruit, natural fruit, off an apple tree or some sort. But the Bible tells us that it was the fruit of the lips. So what did she do? She took those words out of that carnal realm and spoke them. And when
when she spoke them, their eyes were open. And they knew they were naked. But they had always been naked. They just was clothed enough for the glory of God that all they saw was God, 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 God. Now they were naked of God. Oh, hallelujah. They were naked of that image, their identity. They lost their identity. They couldn't look at themselves no more and say, we're God's. Uh, we have power. We have authority. Instead, they looked at themselves and said, wait a minute. We're naked. we got to hunt something. They started works. All the work started then. we got to work ourselves up some leaves and get ourselves covered. And we've got to strive to do this, that, and the other. When before, all they had to do would just be hallelujah. They were that personification of the perfection of the image and the likeness of God and His creation. Now they're confused. Now they don't know who they are. Why? Because they bought one lie. The lie was in the day you eat thereof you shall be as God. That was a lie. They already were as God. Amen, church. So here they are going around in a stupor stumbling around. Why? Because the man has fell in. Listen to me now. The spirit has become in a slumbering condition now, has sunk down, and the soulish realm has come forth without the covering of a husband. Right. Now she don't know what to do. Hello, church. She's eat. She sees her fall. So does the man ignorantly partake of the fruit? No. He willingly partakes of the same fruit. Oh, hallelujah. He took the same words into him that she took into her. Somebody say praise the Lord. And when he did, he was by faith entering in as a figure of him that was to come that there would be a way to bring that woman back and put her back in his side and make God's man whole again. There's coming a marriage of the spirit and the soul and God's man is going to be whole again. One more time. Hallelujah. What in spirit. What in mind. What in Christ. One body. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. What is this? The mystery of His will. It's what He wanted all along. And they want nothing. Come hell or high water that will keep God from getting what He will. God will get up. And it's the cool of the day, and he don't skip that day. Oh, some of you, bless your hearts, if your neighbor had done that, or one of your little church buddies had a, had a problem, you know, I ain't calling them today. Oh, they need to repent and get right with God. Well, I want you to know that God just walked right back in their world. He came right in there. They might have tried to push him out with all that talk, all that carnality, but the Lord came walking in the cool of the day, and he said, Adam, where are you? Hallelujah. Where are you? Do you know who you are? the mystery of His will. Do you know what my will is? Right. And you know what Adam said? Oh boy, where's the time going to having fun? Hallelujah. Adam Lord. said, Lord, we heard Your voice and we were what? Afraid. Had the word fear ever been used? No. When did fear start being used? When the will of man came into the picture. See, your free will, your will is making you afraid to trust God's will because your will has deceived you so many times. Your will ain't faithful. My God, you can will to paint the house, get one door done, not touch it again for five years. Praise yeah. God. You can will to rake the yard and get two bags up, might be it for the whole fall time. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will direct this little part back here until I got smart and run that mulching blade real slow over it until I got them all chewed up. And then my will changed, you see. But the will of God never changes. We're going to have to leave it there for now. And I may come back. I may, I may have left this in such a way I'll have to come back and finish it. But I want you to know that you need to lose your fear of ever trusting the will of God again. 
Amen. Because He comes back. He comes back. Let me tell you something. He didn't come back with a Bible under His arm. He didn't come back wanting them to go to counseling so that He could decide whether they deserve to be restored or not. I'm preaching better than you're shouting now. He said, Adam, where are you? Do you know who you are? He didn't mean where are you geographically. Surely you don't think he was really hid from God in no natural way. No, God asked him who he was so he could answer himself. Could he still determine who he was in God? And Adam said, I was afraid. I heard your voice and I was afraid. And he said, we, not I. See, in the beginning, they were both one. They were called Adam. Now he's saying, we hid ourselves. And this is what God said. Or this is what Adam said. Because we was naked. And you know what God asked him? God said, who told you? Oh. You know what that leads me to believe? That leads me to believe that even still up to that moment, glory to God. In the appearance of God, they looked as they always had to them. But in the appearance of their own mind, they now had another will that knew good and evil. I'm glad God's will is only good. Glory to God. Yeah. And do you know these people gonna get literally they'll get literally spitting mad with me for getting up here and saying that the only thing God can do is use good. Right. They'll say, Oh, that's dangerous to teach him people that. They'll go out and live any way they want to. Bless your heart, they're doing that anyway. All that bunk you teach them, they go out and live any way they want to. And the reason they do is because they don't feel they're ever accepted in the beloved. Yeah. Hallelujah. God said, Who told you? That's what he's asking you. When you start all that foolishness, he wants you to go commune with him, talk to him, get up the Holy Ghost with him, have a good prayer time, and all you do is lay there and tell him what a sinner you are. Tell him how unworthy you are of his love. And all he's doing is standing there saying, Who told you that, man? Who told you you was dead? Who told you? You bought somebody's lie. Now whose will have you been listening to? Lord, help us to discern the mystery of your will. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, saints. I love you. I'll see you this evening. Glory. All right, 630 and